Today on the Sports Desk, we'll take a look at some of LSU's youngest fans. And as always, our very own Charlton Wilson takes us to New Orleans to focus on the Saints. You're at the Sports Desk, and it starts right now. Hello there and welcome to the Sports Desk. I'm Morgan, she's Rachel. But Rachel, before we get to the show, I gotta ask you real quick, what week of school are we exactly on right now? You know, Morgan, I think it's the fifth week the fifth already week of school. Already? Yeah, I don't really like to admit it, but it is. <sighs> well, how you doing now? You're five weeks through. You know, I'd really rather not say, you know, since this is recorded, I, I don't <laughs> want people to know how I'm doing personally in school, but if you want to let them know, go uh, ahead. I'm not ashamed to admit I'm a slacker and I've dropped some classes, <laughs> failed an econ test, but, you know, anyway, let's not go to the rest of that. Anyway, like I said, enough of that depressing topic. Let's move on to something that makes us all happy, and that's LSU football, of course. The Tigers played the Tigers of Auburn Saturday night for LSU's SEC home opener. Les Miles called the precipitation in Tiger Stadium a stiff do, but it was Auburn that was affected by the slippery conditions in Tiger Stadium. As the first quarter, we have here Nick Marshall fumbling the handoff here, recovered by linebacker Lamine Barrow, and LSU gets the possession. Next play, Jeremy Hill doing what he does best, breaking off long runs, and this is a 49-yard touchdown to put LSU up seven. This is a part of 183 total yards Jeremy Hill had on the night and three touchdowns. But we fast forward to the third after LSU opens up a 21-0 lead where Mettenberger is robbed by Jermaine Whitehead and that leads up to a Trey Mason two-yard touchdown to put Auburn on the board finally in the third quarter. 28-14, LSU trying to regain a little momentum. Zach Mettenberger winds back, throws it to Jarvis Landry who had seven catches, 118 yards and that one touchdown you see right there. And now later on in the game, three minutes to go, Auburn trying to make something happen, trying to make it respectable. But Jalen Mills, with the, with the nail in the coffin, intercepting Nick Marshall, and that was his second interception thrown of the day. Final score, LSU wins 35-21. Auburn gets their first loss of the season as LSU cruises to 3-0. Because of the rainy weather Saturday night, a sloppy performance by LSU was no surprise. Sports Showtime producer Patrick Clay explains why the Tigers must improve for the remainder of their season. Chance of rain. It wasn't another earthquake game between Auburn and LSU, but the elements did play a part. It certainly would be far for me to say that it ever rained <coughs> on Saturday night in Tiger Stadium, but it was very close to rain, if not a, uh, a, uh, a very stiff dew. Despite the conditions, LSU raced out to an early 21 to nothing lead before they began looking a bit stiff themselves. Turnovers, penalties, and poor clock management took what could have been a blowout and gave Auburn a chance to stay in the game. Anytime you play a Western Division opponent, certainly Auburn, um, it's going to be a, a competitive game. And um, we took such a, uh, a, a strong lead initially that uh, it's, it's, uh, I just didn't like how we finished. It may show up as a W in the stat column for the LSU Tigers, but the mood of the players after the game shows they know they have a lot to improve on before next week's top 10 matchup against Georgia. Yeah, I'm, I'm disappointed just because I know how good we can be. Uh, yeah, I know the potential of this offense and uh, yeah, I want us to do better. That's a big request for this balanced offense that saw Jeremy Hill run for nearly 200 yards and three touchdowns and Jarvis Landry break the century mark for the second time this year. But in football, you can never stop improving. And I think that uh, with our ability, we still have to get better. Learn from a few things that we, we made a couple mistakes on. And uh, so in next week, we capitalize on those things. It's nothing to be down about. Uh, you know, get your head down about I me. Mean, we got uh, another, what, seven, eight more games. So, I mean, we, we can keep getting better, keep getting better. Patrick Clay, Tiger TV Sports. We'll see if LSU can make the improvements as they travel to Athens to take on number nine Georgia this Saturday at 2.30 p.m. on CBS. But before all the focus shifts to Georgia, today Les Miles met with the media for his weekly Lunch with Les press conference. Among the topics discussed was the questionable decision to go for the fake field goal in the third quarter against Auburn. The play didn't result in the first down, but it did give Miles something else. Uh, a headache is what I got from it. I, uh... I need to give thought to running those things, and uh, should we have uh, executed it, we would have got exactly what we wanted, but uh, anyways. 
Well, I hope that Les Miles gives a little bit more thought next time into a play like that, and maybe it'll save us all from a big headache. Well, it's one of those situations where if he got it, he's a genius, but of course he didn't, so now everyone's going to give him some grief. So right, next you either week, praise him or you just don't like him. It's one or the other. Exactly. And now after the break, Charlton Wilson will stop by to focus on the New Orleans Saints with his eyes on Nola. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back to the Sports Desk. And now we bring in our NOLA expert, Charlton Wilson, for his eyes on NOLA. Charlton, how's it going, my friend? It's going great. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, tell me how the Saints are doing, Charlton. Get well, to it. The Saints are still undefeated heading into week four. They have a Monday night matchup against the Dolphins, which will be a battle of undefeated. The Saints had a great victory at home against the Cardinals. Let's look at the highlights. Here's Drew Brees answering back from an early Cardinals touchdown with a 27-yard touchdown to fan favorite Robert Meacham, who's back in the black and gold. In the second quarter, Drew Brees throws a jump ball to Jimmy Graham, who leaps over Jeremiah Bell for a 16-yard touchdown pass. And he should be in a dunk contest as much time as he's been dunking on his goal post this year. But he finished the game with 134 yards. Here's Carlson Palmer. Defense put the pressure on him. Cam Jordan gets a sack. The defense finished with four sacks total in the game. And here's Drew Brees. The Red Sea parts. Drew Brees <laughs> takes advantage and leaps into the end zone for a seven yard touchdown. The Saints get the victory and they prove to 3 0 in the season. Black and Gold fans have a lot to be proud of from that game, and they were excited to see Robert Meacham in the Black and Gold making a play again after he spent time in San Diego where he actually scored against the Saints. Everything that you go through is for a reason. And just being back here is actually scoring a touchdown in the dome again against, against the Saints. And then now I come back and I score a touchdown with the Saints. So the, There were some familiar faces to LSU fans in the dome as Tyron Matthew and Patrick Peterson were in town. However, it was not the best homecoming for Tyron, even though the Honey Badger had a time where he took what he wanted. They were up by a touchdown. You know, we want to get the ball back to our offense, and um, I mean that, that. I mean that's our mindset. You know, every 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 time we go on the field, you know, we want to get the ball back to our offense. But you know, unfortunately, you know, we wasn't able to do it. I'm extremely proud of him. I mean, he's been doing a lot of great things for this Arizona Cardinals team. I mean, he brings a lot of excitement to the Arizona Cardinals team. And the defense step up once again. They were a key factor in this win, forcing two turnovers and getting four sacks on the day. I've been claiming the strength of our D-line is just how much youth and talent is on the D-line, and it definitely showed today. You know, we as an offense, man, when defense is playing like that, we're, we're, we're feeding off them, you know, and, and you know, despite our struggles at times, which, you know, we go down on the first drive, we score a touchdown, and then after that, there was a little, you know, more to be desired than, you know, going three and out a couple times. Now, the score doesn't show it, but Drew Brees was under a lot of pressure in the game. He made a big adjustment and did something he rarely does, which was scramble for a touchdown, but it did not surprise him or his teammates. Because I know every time he takes off the run, uh, uh, something special happens. Uh, you know, I remember uh, two years ago, and um, unfortunately this time, you know, he didn't try to dunk. Uh, you know, so hopefully next time he scores, he'll go up and dunk it again. Um, it was funny, that play happened um, exactly like that in practice this week. So when, uh, when coach says, you know, hey, what happens in practice usually happens in the game. Now, thanks to Charleston for the look in New Orleans, but back to Baton Rouge, where we all know Tiger fans come in all shapes and sizes and ages. Sports Showtime reporter Shonda Johnson talked to some of the tiniest Tigers fans to get their opinion on Saturday night's game in Death Valley. Hi, I'm Shonda Johnson from Tiger TV, and this is Tiny Tigers! I am here today to give an inside view of the LSU football game day from the Tigers' tiniest supporters. Let's have a look and see what our Tiny Tigers have to say today. What's your favorite thing about LSU football? Purple and gold. It's fun to watch. All the people. It's like, it has so much people. All the fans. There's so much people here that love LSU. Men and Bird. Yeah, who's my favorite player? Zach Mittenberger. Zach Mittenberger. I have no clue. Zach Mittenberger. What's the best part about game day? I don't know. I get to watch LSU Tigers. I think it's about all the fans together 
in the stadium all cheering for Tigers. I don't know. Because I get to see my favorite player. Because I was born here and I know, and then I was growing up with LSU and I like it. Does it ever rain in Tiger Stadium? No. Yes. It's rained once that I've been there. It does sometimes. That wraps up this week's Tiny Tigers. Until next time. Go Tigers! Kids say the darndest things, don't they, Charles? They do, they do. <laughs> Anyway, stick around. We'll be right back. And before we let you go, be sure to tune in to tomorrow's episode of Sports Showtime to catch Alex Ramsey, Ramsey's health segment at Baton Rouge Krav Maga. Oh, Krav Maga uses basic uh, kickboxing techniques to give you a great full body workout. What's different about it is that it teaches you how to use these skills in dangerous situations. Check out Ramsey. Well, uh, technical difficulties, everyone, and we're running short on time. But that's all we have for the sports desk this week. She's Rachel. I'm Morgan. Stick around next week.